so this video is about the female reproductive system. So the overall functions of their female reproductive system is going to be, so similarly to the male reproductive system, it's going to have to produce and maintain uh, the sex cells. And in the female reproductive system, the, those sex cells are called oocytes. In the males, they're called spermato um, spermatozoa or sperm. The female reproductive system has to be able to, so again, produce and maintain female sex cells called oocytes. They have to be able to transport these oocytes to the site where fertilization can take place. Um, and then also similarly to the male, the female reproductive system is going to produce the female sex hormones, estrogen and progesterone. But unlike the male, the female reproductive system has a few additional functions. It has to be able to provide a favorable environment for the developing fetus. And then it also has to be able to expel that fetus to the outside. Um, so now we're going to start to identify some of the major structures and talk about some of the functions of those structures. So with the female reproductive system, the primary sex organ, uh, the gonad, is going to be the ovary. In the male, we were talking about the testes. Females, it's the ovaries that are going to produce the oocytes, which are the female sex cells, and produce the female sex hormones. So we're looking at a sagittal section through the female pelvic cavity. Just to point out some of the structures, this is the ovary right here. There are two, but we're just seeing one side. Ovary, uh, these are the, this is the uterine tube. Um, this is the pubic synthesis. So this would be anterior, this is posterior. Working our way back, this is the bladder first. This is the uterus. The vagina would be down here. This is the rectum and anus. So if I go to this picture, now we can see all of those organs in a sagittal section. Pubic symphysis, working our way back. Here's the bladder. This is the urethra and the urethral orifice. This is the uterus, the vaginal canal, and the vaginal orifice. This is the rectum and the anus. So a lot of students, um, you know, don't get confused with urethra and vagina. Um, it, an easy way to tell is if you, if you don't remember that the bladder and the urethra are going to be anterior to the uterus and the vagina, another easy way to tell is the vaginal canal, you'll see all these folds. Those are called vaginal rugae. You don't see the folds in the uh, urethra, right? So it's a much thinner tube versus this big, larger fibromuscular uh, vagina. Okay. Also, look, the bladder is far more collapsed. That's because this big, thick, muscular uterus kind of sits on top of it. So the uterus has a much thicker myometrium layer, so it's, it's thicker and it, it's heavier and it kind of collapses the bladder. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about uh, the ovary, since those are the primary sex organs of the female reproductive system. So here, this is a cartoon image from your book. These guys are the ovaries right here. Um, some supporting elements of the ovaries that you need to be able to identify. These are the suspensory ligaments. Okay? And the suspensory ligaments holds the ovary at its upper end, and it surrounds, the suspensory ligament surrounds the ovarian blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, and nerves. So you can see in the suspensory ligaments are all of the, the blood supply to the ovaries. Um, another supporting element is going to be right here. So these are called the uh, ovarian ligaments. And the ovarian ligaments connects the ovary to the, to the uterus. Okay? Those are the ovarian ligaments. And then over here, this is the, um, the round ligament. And the round ligament is actually going to main, it helps maintain the position of the uterus, especially during pregnancy. So if we go back to this picture, I'll point those uh, structures out. So coming down here, this would be the suspensory ligament. Connected right here to the ovary, this would be the ovarian ligament. And then right here would be the round ligament. I have some other pictures. Let's see. You can see the little suspensory ligament. This is the ureter, right? So this is 
part of the urinary system, it would come down and connect to the posterior side of the bladder. That's the ureter, suspensory ligament, ovarian ligament, crown ligament. I think I have some more pictures that would, yeah, over here. Suspensory ligament, ovarian ligament, crown ligament. Okay. Um, let's see. So let's talk a little bit more about the ovaries. So this is a picture of one of our models of an ovary. Up here, this is the suspensory ligament where you see all the blood vessels. This would be the uh, this would be the um, ovarian ligament right here. Now, looking at the ovary, there is two major portions of the ovary. You have the cortex, which in the cortex you see different follicles at all different stages of development, and in each of those follicles is going to be a, an oocyte. Okay, so the oocyte, the sex cell is going to be in the center, and all of the supporting cells that surround that oocyte together, they create a follicle. And so these are all follicles at different stages of development. So that's in the cortex. And in the medulla, is it's like a loose connective tissue. This is where you're going to find the blood vessels, nerves, and lymphatic vessels. Well, I just want to mention the follicles, not that you have to, I'm not sure if you have to identify these for your class, but it's the follicular cells that are going to produce estrogen. So follicle stimulating hormone comes down from the uh, pituitary and follicle stimulating hormone uh, is going to stimulate these follicles to start to grow, develop, mature, and produce estrogen. Uh, this happens upon puberty. So when you're talking about female reproductive system, when a female, very early on in female development, uh, we're talking about in the womb, females are going to have a certain number of stem cells and they're going to undergo a certain number of replications. And then upon birth, you have no, a female has no more stem cells left. So they are going to have what's called as many primordial follicles as they ever will have. They can't create any more. And they're going to be arrested in very early on in meiosis. Okay? And they'll stay that way until puberty of the female. And then upon hormonal cues, then that then will start, um, these primordial follicles will start undergoing development into primary, secondary, and graphene follicles to get ready for ovulation. Okay? Uh, follicle stimulating hormone is going to stimulate multiple follicles to start developing uh, with each cycle, right, with each ovarian cycle, but one will win out and one will be um, kind of the winner, and that's the one that will ovulate its oocyte, okay? Um, now, this process of follicle development and ovulation will happen up until menopause. So at the onset of menopause, this process stops, and so there is a limit to uh, an age limit to when a, a woman can ha have a child, right? Whereas in men, when we saw the process of spermatogenesis, um, men retain their stem cells, and so in the testes, those seminiferous tubules, uh, once they reach puberty, they can undergo spermatogenesis over and over and over again, continually throughout the lifespan of the male forever, okay? Uh, so that's, that's different in females. Um, and the onset of menopause will vary from woman to woman around maybe 40s or 50s, okay? Okay, so um, let's see. I do want to mention, so here these would be the primordial follicles. We have some primary and secondary follicles developing. Over here, this guy, this is what's called a graphene follicle. This is the most, these over here, primordial, primary, and secondary, they all contain a primary oocyte. This big graphene follicle is the most mature, and it's kind of cut off at the bottom, but you'll see this is the secondary oocyte down here. This guy is what's about to be um, ovulated. Okay, So this huge graphene follicle is about to undergo ovulation. This is what it looks like after ovulation. So all these cells left behind are going to, are the follicle cells, Okay, um, and then the oocyte has been ovulated, and that will go into the uterine tubes. What's left behind, will the follicle cells that are left behind will create or form a corpus luteum. So over here, this is a corpus luteum. 
Now the hormone from the now the hormone we're going to be dealing with is luteinizing hormone from the pituitary. And luteinizing hormone is going to come down and stimulate this corpus luteum to produce progesterone. And progesterone is going to help maintain the uterine lining. So the inside lining of the uterus is called the endometrium. And progesterone will help maintain it for possible implantation. So if this oocyte gets released right into the uterine tubes, it gets fertilized, and it does the appropriate number, divi number of divisions and all that by the time it gets into the uterus, well, progesterone is going to maintain that uterine lining for possible implantation and development of the zygote into a fetus. Now, if implantation doesn't happen, we don't need this corpus luteum anymore. It will start to degenerate into these structures right here called corpus albicans. Essentially, it's like scar tissue. It's what's left over after the corpus luteum degenerates. So let's go back up to this cartoon picture. So ovulation occurs. That secondary oocyte gets released. These little finger-like projections are called fimbrae. They'll do a sweeping motion to suck up that oocyte into the uterine tube. This first funneled per portion of the uterine tube is called the infundibulum. That oocyte's then going to travel into this dilated kind of bubbled up region called the ampulla. If fertilization were to take place, it usually takes place in the ampulla. Then from the ampulla of the uterine tube, the last portion is called the isthmus of the uterine tube, right before it gets into the uterus. All right, so this oocyte travels through the uterine tube, through the infundibulum, the ampulla, the isthmus, and now into the uterus. So the uterine tube's main function is just to convey the oocyte to the uterus. Here's the uterus. Some structures of the uterus. This bubbled up region is called the fundus. This region right here is called the body, this funneled down region. And then this region that uh, projects into the va va vagina, the vaginal canal, this is the cervix. There are three linings, three layers to the uterus. This inner lining Right? This is the endometrium. So the endo, endo meaning lining within. The endometrium, that's going to be a columnar epithelium with abundant, abundant glands and with secretions that will help maintain a favorable environment for implantation and development of the zygote into a fetus. This middle portion, this big, thick middle portion, that's all made up of smooth bundles and bundles of smooth muscle. That's called the myometrium, myo for muscle. And then the outer layer, the outer serosal layer, is called the perimetrium. Okay? So here, here's our big, thick uh, muscular uterus. This would be the endometrium, myometrium, and then the outer perimetrium. Function of the uterus, uh, it's going to provide a favorable environment for implantation, as well as a favorable environment for the development of the fetus. Okay. So vagina. So here, this is the vaginal canal. Again, you can see these folds called vaginal rugae. Um, these projections that come up around the cervix, this is called the fornix. So here, this is called the fornix. This is the vaginal canal or the vagina. You can see the vaginal rugae. This would be the vaginal orifice. What's the function of the vagina? The vagina is going to convey uterine secretions. So say um, there no fertilization takes place, no implantation takes place. Well, then this big, thick endometrium that was going to provide a favorable environment for the developing fetus, we don't need it any longer. So it starts to break down, and it gets released during menses, through the vaginal canal to the outside. Okay, So the va uh, vagina conveys uterine secretions to the outside. It also is going to convey uh, or help expel the fetus to the outside. Um, it also is going to, um, so it provides a channel for birth. And then it also is going to uh, receive the penis during sexual intercourse. So those are all functions of the vagina. Okay.
So I'm going down the list, making sure I think I've identified all the major internal structures. So now we're going to talk about um, external structures. So I'm going to go to this cartoon image. Oh, so this is a um, another model of the uterus, uterine tubes, ovaries, and vagina. So I encourage you to try to identify some of those structures that we talked about on the other models. This is the vulva. So collectively, all external genitalia is called the vulva for in the female reproductive system. So let's talk. Let's talk about the structures of the vulva. So first is the labia majora. So on the very out lateral sides, on the very outside, these this these folds are called the labia majora because they're much larger. The labia majora on the outside, you'll um, you'll see hair follicles, hair shafts. Uh, sebaceous glands, scent glands, all on the labia majora. These inner folds, which lack those structures like hair and sebaceous glands, all that, these are the labia minora. Minora because they are much smaller. Um, together, these folds, the labia majora and the labia minora, help serve create a protective environment for the delicate internal structure or the um, the structures uh, on the inside okay now I'll mention so this labia majora the labia majora on the anterior side are going to merge and form what's called the mons pubis the mons pubis is a fatty padding that protects the pubic bone so right here on this model this all would be the mons pubis okay You'll see hair shafts, um, and then sebaceous glands, sweat glands, all of that. So this is the mons pubis. It's a fatty padding that will help protect um, uh, the pubic symphysis as well as the other organs inside. All right, so labia majora merge to form the mons pubis. The labia minora, they'll be somewhat pinkish in color because they're, uh, lots, they have lots of blood vessels. On the anterior side, the labia majora will merge to form the, the hood of the clitoris. Right here, this is the clitoris. Okay. Uh, this is a, uh, a structure that has abundant nerve fibers, and it's involved in female pleasure as well as female orgasm. The clitoris, it's not just this structure on the outside. The clitoris has a large internal structure as well. So from the so you'll see that the labia minora and the labia majora are folds that protect these structures. Here, this is the urethral orifice, which is anterior to the vaginal orifice. Okay, so urethral orifice, vaginal orifice. Um, this area right here, in which the labia minora protects, is called the vestibule. So the vestibule is where you find the urethral orifice. The vaginal orifice and it's protected by the labia minora and the labia majora. Um, the vestibule will have glands that are analogous to the bulbourethral glands in males. It produces the majority of the lubricating fluids upon sexual arousal for sexual intercourse. So let's see, let's go back to some of these models and identify those structures. Ah, here. Okay. So this right here would be the mons pubis. Okay. Um, here, let's see, this would be the labia majora. This would be the labia minora. This area right here where you see the urethral orifice and the vaginal orifice, this would be the vestibule. This structure right here is the clitoris. Uh, urethra, urethral orifice vagina, vaginal orifice, okay? So a higher, um, uh, closer up picture, clitoris, labia majora, labia minora. This area right here, which is protected by the labia minora is the vestibule, urethral orifice, vaginal orifice. All right, best of luck studying. I suggest going through these the other pictures provided and try to uh, trying to identify those structures yourself.